Lawrence, so it's great to have you on the show. The fact that your stock rallied today, as one analyst pointed out to us, that maybe you dodged a bullet here uh, in terms of not being successful in at least your initial ambition to, to take over U.S. Steel. How, how do you see it now? I, I feel really good. Th thanks for having me, Morgan. It's a pleasure to be with you and John. Uh, look, uh, at the end of the day, what we accomplished with our bid to uh, uh, acquire U.S. Steel is to show investors that there's a lot of value to unlock in our space. Uh, we see a lot of talk about tech, we see a lot of talk about AI, we see a lot of talk about lots of things. We don't see a lot of talk about manufacturing. And uh, the United States lost track of what makes for a, an important uh, uh, basis to, to the economy, and we're bringing this back, and the investors will come along. So the, today was a good day for uh, Cleveland Cliffs and a good day for the shareholders of Cleveland Cliffs. Yeah, I mean, you raised such a key point, and I want to get into that in a little more detail here in just a moment. But first, the fact that you said today that you're going to up your share repurchases, um, focus on the fact that you, you've reached your, your debt target for the year as well. Are you also thinking about reinvesting into your steel mills and your infrastructure as you do see this secular growth opportunity in the industrial part of the economy? We, we have been doing that. By the way, uh, we are very pleased that uh, uh, we are now with a net debt in the order of $2.9 billion, or so below the $3 billion target. We are not even borrowing any money from our a ABL. Uh, uh, so that, that, that's mission accomplished on behalf of our shareholders. Uh, with that said, we keep investing in our, in our steel mills. We acquired assets that were not being well treated by the previous uh, foreign owners. And we had to invest a lot of money to bring them up to speed. We had to invest to create jobs among these two workers. And uh, we did all that, for not only preserving jobs, but generating more jobs. So that was the entire value proposition, which the entrenched board of West Steel uh, uh, did not recognize. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, they were trading based on their cash on hand. We brought them back to the, to the world with our offer. And uh, we're glad that uh, their old three times multiple was now seven multiple. So the entire sector has been uh, uh, regraded by uh, our offer to buy Nippon, to buy U.S. Steel. We, we, we can't make an offer to buy Nippon Steel. We would be blocked by the Japanese government. Mm. So let's see how the U.S. government will react to this uh, uh, proposal. It's not a deal yet. Yeah. It's just a yeah, and to your point, I mean, it is a high bar to hurdle, and we've seen this across sectors, the M&A landscape with regulators, but when we talk about steel and, and, and an American steel company like U.S. Steel, there's a national security element to all of this as well, and we certainly know industrial policy under this administration is being viewed very with a very wide lens around national security. want to get your outlook for steel making in this country as we do head into 2024 as we see economic growth slow but as you just mentioned fiscal policy is in place whether it's the ira or infrastructure spending or chips act uh, or onshoring and reshoring that are actually propelling and spurring more demand for steel products yeah it's all all of the above and the cleveland cliffs is very well equipped as as is to benefit from all that but the good news is that, uh, uh, based on the, the interest demonstrated by Nippon Steel to come to the United States, my, my point has been proven. Uh, it's uh, important to keep our production in the, inside the United States. We need to understand that the workers are important in the entire big picture. And that's why I started with the workers. Because in order to have an M&A successful deal in that space, you need to have the buy-in of the workers. So that's why I started with the USW. There's no way a deal would close without support from the USW. So there's a lot to come uh, 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 after this announcement. So that's why I said good luck to Nippon Steel and good luck to US Steel and their entrenched board. Let's well, see. I, how I wonder what kind of a good luck that is because the, the unions don't seem to like this.